hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is jason newland and this is let me bore you to sleep not let me bore you to sleep but let me bore you to sleep not that there's any difference between the two titles it's just one sounds a bit more livelier maybe than the other and I've no idea what I'm talking about but as with the rest of this session and pretty much everything else I do I just make it up as I go along so the whole point of this thing, this recording, is that I just talk for however long the session lasts, because I don't know how long it's going to last, it could be 10 minutes, could be 20 minutes, could be 40, it could be an hour be two hours who knows I hope it's not two hours long because well I think I'll be asleep at the end of it so only listen to this or watch the video if you watch it on YouTube if you can safely close your eyes or when you can safely close your eyes because this sleep session may cause drowsiness and that's it so I suppose the warning should be me talking about my life may cause incredibly incredible boredness 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 is whatever the real you know proper word is boredom boredom that's what I was looking for boredom you kind of have to say boredom in a kind of a flat way if you say boredom like that it doesn't quite sound as boring I suppose we it's natural isn't it it's, he said uh, oh I really enjoyed the party last night it was really exciting that kind of doesn't really fit does it when you say the word exciting I guess it perhaps needs to have a little bit more life to it but I can't be bothered to say the word any other way right now. So, an exciting thing's happened. I'm still, <laughs> I'm using the recorder, but I've um, got batteries in it instead of having it connected to the, the main. Oh. It's, I just realised like, just as I started talking I got bored before I even finished the sentence so I'll try and continue um, before I used to connect it to the main main plug but now I've bought some batteries and for some reason it's given me a, a sense of renewal it's like a like a new slate it's like I'm Starting all over again, turning a new leaf, new slate. I can I've got a new renewed energy about me because I've got new batteries in my recording studio thing. I know it's. Uh, the good thing about this is 
I can talk about pointless stuff and that's kind of the point. I had somebody recently who sent me a message on Facebook telling me that um, that this was useful, listening to these sessions was useful and uh, she said that I think she, her husband, she, she put the volume up for her husband to listen to and he found it funny it's, uh, I suppose it's uh, I've had that you know in the past when I've I've had a friend who I used to have a friend honest I did and this friend uh, so I was posting my hypnosis videos onto Facebook for people to share and watch and listen and you know hopefully maybe gain some kind of benefit uh, from those videos and my friend watched one of those videos or I imagine she didn't watch a lot of it maybe some of it and she posted a comment saying how funny it was and I think it was because she'd never seen me on a video before and she'd seen my face before because I used to date her um, plus you know I knew her so I guess she would have seen my face but it seems to be something different from seeing someone's face in person talking compared to seeing somebody on a video screen talking and it seems to, I don't know because for me I've been doing it for so long you know I was I was a young man when I started to making the hypnosis videos online I was 35 and coming up to 48 soon so I was just a just a lad just a tiny small child of 35 and seeing myself on a video screen or on a computer screen is just natural not that I spend a lot of time watching myself because I'll be honest the novelty of seeing myself on the internet wore off a few months ago in fact so it lasted for 12 years but the novelty very exciting but a few months ago no but I'm not that bothered about seeing myself though it is kind of interesting to look back at in a way how much younger I looked but then I was younger it's not really any surprise is there I don't think there's any reason for people to be surprised when they look at pictures of themselves you see that don't you when someone looks at a photograph album and they see a picture of themselves 40 years ago and they're surprised at how young they look but you kind of should look young if you're 70 and you're looking at a picture photographs of yourself when you were 19 and you still look the same as you do now there's probably something wrong with you there's probably something physical you know, if you look 70 when you were 19 not that there's anything wrong with looking 70 it's a lovely a lovely lovely look but I did look younger but when I 
I first did the videos, I was doing them in black and white. It wasn't because, you know, there were no color video cameras, you know. This wasn't, you know, in the 40s, 1940s or 50s, you know, the color, I did have the availability of a color camcorder or webcam. But I found the picture was better in black and white than it was in color because the webcams back then weren't that great. They're not particularly brilliant now, even. But I think anything that connects to a computer via a USB lead never really seems to have the the quality that you may get with something that's on its own, you know, that you can film separately and then maybe connect to transfer the file. By the way, that's that's the uh, that's the chair creak in there. That's not me testing out new noises. Um, I do like making noises sometimes. Like, that's one of my noises I like to make. It's not really a noise, more of a sound. It seems to be this uh, emotional connection to the word noise. But sound, sound is just more of a factual thing, isn't it? I just let you know that there may be background sounds, uh, one of which I just realised is my laptop is growling for some reason in the background. You've got the standard uh, sounds, you've got the fridge in the kitchen buzzing away. There's maybe sounds of the neighbours in their kitchens doing whatever people do in kitchens. As the occasional car will pull up, you may hear that. You may hear Andre jumping up suddenly and running over to do a poo or a wee or just to scratch himself. You may not actually hear the poo. Although sometimes he does make a little bit of noise. It seems like he saves up his farts for when he poos. But I let them go, you know, throughout the day. I don't I don't build the gas up. He I think he he builds the gas up. And he just lets it all go at one at one time. It's quite funny seeing him crouching down, his tail sticking up and just staring at me as if to say, stop looking. Daddy, stop looking. This isn't for your eyes. How come you get to close the door when you go to the toilet, but I have to do it in front of you? And my answer to that is, you don't have to do it in front of me. Go and do it in a different place. He's got more than one place to go. We have these conversations. By the way, Andre is not my son. He is my son, but he's a ferret. Just in case you think I've got a, a human child who I'll make <laughs> go to the toilet <laughs> in the corner of the room. It's not that situation at all. He's a ferret. He's a little fairy ferret and he is my son, but, you know, not biologically. Nor those claws and those teeth. That would have been a painful birth. 
especially with our vagina. And, uh, so yeah, I suppose, yeah, because I can't, I'm a man, I can't give birth, but I forget I said that. So, the point of these, in a womb of course, the point of these sessions is, these recordings, is just for me to waffle on. Waffly, 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 waffly on. And to the process, you can just relax, let go. And you can focus on my voice. You don't necessarily need to focus on the actual content of some of the things that I may say during the course of this recording. You can maybe focus just on my voice, the texture, the volume, the resonance. And as I said the word of resonance, I was trying to think of other words that could be connected with the sound of my voice. Um, the timber, timber? Temperature, no, that'd be wrong. But yeah, basically just the bass, if there's a bass and maybe the flatness. Although I don't think my voice is particularly flat. Or maybe it is. But the real point is that the more that you focus on my voice, the less you focus on other things that are not relevant to this moment. And when you focus on less stuff and you focus more and more on my voice your mind naturally feels more relaxed just naturally regardless of what I'm talking about I could count the hairs on my leg to you I'm not going to, but I'm just saying I could do that. So well, there's another hair, there's one more, uh, that's another one there. Oh, there's another one nearby as well. Oh, that one's sticking in a different direction. That one's a ginger hair, and there's another grey hair. You know, I could go through that process, but. The point is, is you focus more just on my voice. Your mind naturally feels more relaxed. And you don't need me to tell you to feel relaxed. That's the, the power of your own mind. That's the magic of focusing because that's what, that's what hypnosis is really, it's just focusing. And then it can be what you do with that focus. But because this is focused on just me boring you to sleep, which means we don't need to focus on any particular thing. I don't need to talk about you getting in touch with that sense of gratitude 
that you have inside you towards various things, maybe people, maybe situations, maybe for what you have could be as simple as being grateful you got this weird man in England who makes recordings that can help you feel really bored and allow your mind to just relax, declutter and just kind of drift away really I don't need to say any of that stuff I don't need to I don't need to point out that your body is also relaxing the muscles in your body are feeling calmer because those things just happen naturally it really is just a case of me talking and talking and talking and you know some people don't seem to know what they sound like. But I've been making these recordings for so long, I actually hear my voice the way that you hear my voice. So when I speak, every word sounds like a like a Frank Sinatra song, you know, it's very, very beautiful, <laughs> I think Andre's going to tell me what he thinks about that, by going to the toilet, trying to scratch at the front door to go out. I wonder why my chair is so creaky. It didn't used to be. Maybe I should get some kind of oil. Apparently, if you use furniture polish, on door hinges it can stop the door hinges from creaking and it saves using oil which can just make a mess of course I hold no responsibility um, if you do try that out and it doesn't work and the door just falls off or shrinks down to the size of a pea or a really, really small letterbox. So I'm not going to take responsibility for that, but I have tested it myself and it did work. It's my dad that told me. He said, you know what, son, he calls me son. I don't think he actually knows what my name is. He's been calling me son forever. I've never actually heard him say my name. I just wonder what would he do if I was a girl? Because he couldn't keep calling me daughter. Not unless he wanted to go back in time about a hundred years. 
and it would be more acceptable. But he said sun. If you, your bathroom door is very creaky and if you've got some furniture polish, all you need to do is just spray the furniture polish onto the door hinge. The door, by the way, the door hinge is the, the bit um, that holds the door onto the door frame. It's that metal connection and that's what allows the door to open and close without uh, well, falling, falling off. It attaches it to the door, otherwise it wouldn't be attached. But if it didn't have a hinge and it was attached, then it'd just be attached. You wouldn't be able to open it. So you'd need to have another door built into the door you already have. And you kind of need a hinge on there. If you didn't have a hinge at all, maybe you need to get yourself a cat flap but a really large cat flap. There again, I suppose, cat, cat flaps have hinges as well. But they're all built in when you buy them, so you don't have to kind of add that to it. And I said to my dad, okay, so, Do you want some pizza? Which was the original question I asked him. But you know, he started talking about doors and hinges and the bathroom and sometimes it goes off topic. I actually saw him yesterday and he said, he's 72 now and he said to me, that he's got a, a 30 year plan and I said what's that to stay alive and I realised that maybe I shouldn't have said that but I did and I was semi pleased with myself because I thought oh it's quite a it's a mildly humorous thing to say I didn't say that out loud because that doesn't really fit does it when you say to someone something and then and I was, uh, you know, asked him, did you find that humorous at all? I did. You know, I asked him to gauge it, you know, zero out to ten, you know, so you can maybe use it again in a future conversation with somebody else. You know what I like to do? I like to talk to people and tell them something in a future conversation so maybe it's something that they've already told me for example I said to a friend oh, did you know there used to be a railway check track through that field um, you know 20 years ago and he said he looked at me and said oh, I told you that I said, oh, I knew, I just, something about it that not intrigues me, because that would really not be the right word, tickles me a little bit about doing that, telling people something that they've told me. It's even more fun to do with liars. If you know someone that lies a lot, you can just tell them stuff that they've told you. Or even more fun if you know somebody that just for whatever reason feels the need to say the opposite to whatever you say and there are some people out there then find something that they like and then you can play with them so there's this person that I used to work with and anything I said 
She would always say the opposite. I'd say, oh, looking forward to Easter. And she would say, oh, you know, don't like Easter, don't like that. I'd say, oh, I'm looking forward to breathing tomorrow. Oh, I don't like oxygen. You know, that, that kind of person always didn't like whatever I liked. So I waited. I waited my, my took my time. And I knew that she was a, what a lovely sound in the background. Andre climbing into his cage to get some food. I knew that she really enjoyed watching The X Factor on television. So I took my time, waited for months and months until The X Factor was coming back. And I said, and my boss said to me, what are you doing the weekend, son? And I said, don't call me son, call me Jason. And he said, oh, sorry, I thought I was your dad in the story. I said, no, you're my boss. He said, oh, okay, I'll get muddled up because your story was so boring. I said, it's okay, it's kind of the point. And he said, sorry I'm yawning, but I can't be bothered to not yawn. It's really hard to stop. And I said, I can't really understand you when you're talking and yawning. It's very, uh, I could see what you had for dinner last week. Your mouth was so wide. And he said, that doesn't even make sense. I said, I know. And he said, uh, so what are you doing for the weekend? And to me, and I, I'm not sure if he said Jason because he was looking at me. If you're actually looking at the person, you don't need to say their name, I don't think. If you're talking to one person, why would you ever need to say their name? In case they don't know it's just them that you're talking to? Anyway, so my boss said, what you, I'm sorry about the background sounds, but that's Andre, making love to the carrier bags in the kitchen. said what are you do in the weekend I said well Saturday night I'm going to watch the first edition of the new series of or new season of X Factor on television and this woman that I was talking about before she said oh, I hate X Factor and she just it's like she froze because she realised that actually she loves X Factor and she had nowhere to go she not I don't mean physically I mean she did have a home and I think she was married and she had a car and there was roots out of the building you know the doors and stuff so she had plenty of places to go but I think verbally she and mentally she was kind of stuck because she just committed herself to something that she didn't believe in and she just froze there when I said froze there I don't mean she's still there now with her mouth open yeah just stuck I mean it wasn't that kind of a situation but she really seemed confused and it was worth it I quite enjoyed that moment it sounds like I planned that you know I've been waiting months to do that it wasn't that I was at home every night you know putting together some sophisticated you know construction uh, in order to, to catch her out I wasn't you know that important to me I didn't 
you know I didn't miss miss dinners so I could think about it and work on the plan it was just something that came about naturally and I just waited for my moment so there was that contrary is that, is that the right term? Contrary person. Contrary, contrary, contrary. Maybe that's not the right word. And sometimes people that seem contrary, they just don't agree with you. You know, it's just got different ideas, which is fine. It's annoying at times, of course. It'd be lovely if everyone agreed with us all the time. Although I wouldn't like that because I talk so much rubbish sometimes that I don't really want people agreeing with me. I think it'd be quite worrying if if I had someone nodding the whole time saying, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, ooh, yeah. A nine foot sausage in a roll. Yeah, let's eat that. Yeah. So, I don't know what Andre's doing now. Just in the bedroom now, just, just doing his thing, really. I don't judge him for it. He's a teenage boy now. And he's, got to do what he's got to do today he was biting me because I think he mistook me for a, for his slipper because he he's basically got a slipper it was an old slipper of mine and he used, it's his girlfriend and he uses without going into graphics he uses the slipper as the head or the neck and he grabs hold of that and shakes it around and he doesn't let go he doesn't let go at all for the whole time that he's um, doing what he's doing and then he pulls together clothes on the floor plastic bags anything that he can use to as the body basically this morning he actually ripped my finger my, my hand open I didn't even realise he'd done it till this evening so it uh, he was biting me a little bit too hard today doesn't do that very often but when he does do it I'll tell you about it in detail and I'll make it part of the therapeutic process that this recording is part of something bigger something less obvious than may seem at first because even though Talking about Andre the ferret hasn't really got a huge amount to do with sleeping or falling asleep. He could have something to teach all of us when it comes to sleeping because he's never more than about five seconds away from being fast asleep. He can fall asleep in seconds. And sometimes he's asleep and he can be, he can wake up instantly. Other times he's asleep and pretty much nothing wakes him up. I don't know if you've seen the film What About Bob with Bill Murray. And there's a scene in the film where he's asleep and 
think it's Richard Dreyfus is trying to wake him up. Using all kind of like really loud instruments and things to try and wake him up. And nothing could wake him up. I think he's using tambourines and trumpets and stuff like that. And uh, nothing woke him up. And then Bob was still laying there. Or Bill Murray, that is Bob. And his alarm clock went off. And that woke him up. And he just did a big yawn. It's not really relative to what we're talking about, Chris. But I suppose a bit like that. Andre is. If he's deep asleep, he's deep asleep. I think he's quite happy when he's like that. I think he goes into some kind of hibernation mode. And in a sense, we all do to a degree. When we go to sleep, there's less activity in our body. We're not really using much in the way of energy. Everything kind of slows down. Mind slows down. There's still activity, but it's a different type of activity. It's not the kind of activity that needs the conscious mind to be involved at all. In fact, Sleeping requires the conscious mind just to go away, really. It's a separate thing. That's something that maybe is important for us to remember that we are not invited to go to sleep. The conscious mind is not invited to go to sleep. The conscious mind is not invited. Sleeping is separate from the conscious mind. You can't be conscious and asleep at the same time. You can sometimes have an awareness when you're asleep. But then I think we, when we dream, there is an awareness of the dream. But it's a different type of awareness. We think of the conscious mind. You just leave that behind when you go to sleep and you drift off in the same way you leave your job behind when you go on holiday if you're about to go on holiday for a week or two weeks you don't get a removal van and start putting all the different machinery or the computers or whatever it is you work with into the van the desks and start removing the office and putting it all into a big vans and lorries and trucks to take with you on holiday because then it wouldn't be a holiday it would be moving And that's far from a holiday. In the same way, your conscious mind is not invited to join you 
on your daily holiday, which is going to sleep. And that conscious part, which is, you know, the need to control things, that need to control how you feel and what you think and all that stuff is not invited, not necessary. It's not part of the sleeping process. In the same way as you wouldn't put a CD of some, I don't know, heavy metal music on really loudly and also on repeat so it's playing all night and if you lay down and then wondered why you weren't falling asleep It's the same way, same thing as having your conscious mind there, yabbering on, thinking about stuff, working out stuff, worrying and nagging you and complaining and fantasizing and planning. all the different things your conscious mind may do and none of it is useful when you're sleeping but a lot of it probably isn't useful when you're awake either but that's not for me to decide for you to make those changes that come about naturally anyway which improves your life and allows you to have more joy and happiness and getting, getting more in touch with how amazing you are conscious mind can just go away leaving you to just drift into a sleep naturally so you can leave the conscious mind outside the bedroom door when you get into bed you can feel that sense of calmness within you I don't know if I told you, but there's a way you can actually get rid of creaks, like creaky doors, by you, you using furniture polish. So I might try to do that with the chair. I think 
he was one dad that told me that. Don't worry, I won't tell you the story again. I'll wait for another day. Another day I'll surprise you and excite you with another story of amazement. S creaky doors and stories of other things that I've forgotten what I've talked about because none of it really is particularly important it's all about just focusing and allowing your mind to do what your mind does naturally because we were born Which is lucky because we wouldn't be here doing this if we weren't. Perhaps I should finish a sentence. We were born to sleep naturally. Every baby can just sleep easily. sleeping is where we heal where we repair our bodies and our minds we can't ever recover from the day before and allows those neurological those new neurological connections to grow so that you can actually notice that the more that you listen to my voice during these let me bore you to sleep recordings the more bored you get quicker how you notice that you your brain starts to switch off naturally and it's quite a nice position to be in I guess because you start to get used to being able to sleep easier more natural And that's a gift that keeps growing every day. And that is the end of this recording. So for me, Andre the Ferret and my squeaky black chair shall I say creaky, creaky black chair stay well sleep well and I will speak to you again very soon <laughs>